folks, hello, welcome to Tecmo Super Bowl Rasmussen Memorial Cup Edition. Today we have the Daily Show with his Houston Oilers taking on the Seattle Seahawks, who are awful. We've already seen them in, well, really in inaction against, uh, who did they play? They played the Broncos, I think. Yes, they did. That's the last time they played the Broncos in a losing effort. They don't have a win yet this season. They're 0-8, which is uh, an, kind of an achievement. Like all these guys who keep missing PATs. Uh, Oilers are a very good team uh, and very well controlled. Since the shellacking he took from the Buffalo Bills, he has not taken another shellacking thereafter. We'll have to see. The important thing to know about the... Uh, Seattle Seahawks is that Dan McGuire is a horrible quarterback and throws in like such high arching passes that it is advised that a no-fly zone is set up over the stadium to avoid his deadly footballs, which will generally get up the commercial airliners. Well, they usually they usually loft harmlessly up there, like so many flying doves. And so, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is McGuire throws really slow and really high. Which is, yeah. His running backs are actually pretty... Oh, oh, McGuire wanted to go on the loose, I think, but he ran into Ray Childress. And I got to punt it away. Get ready to see a lot of punting from the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, Rick Tootin, who is rooting and tootin'. Punts there. Tootin used to play for the uh, Buffalo Bills in the last game. I, I don't know if that's for sure. So I don't usually pay too much attention to whose punter is where. But I do know his name is Rick. And I seem to know his play history, so. That's right, you can't miss. Pitch out to Lorenzo White, who I thought went out of bounds, but the referee did not agree with me. And I'm paid the sportscast. Well, actually, I'm not paid to sports cast, but I'm also not paid to be a line judge. Third and one. Oh, the draw play. Well, Lorenzo White does pretty well for drunkenly running into his blockers in the beginning. So far, Lorenzo White has been doing a hell of a job. Another pitch out. Oh, and that looks like... Is that first a first down? First down! Dang! You know, that's the thing about the Oilers. They have so many weapons at their fingertips. You know, they have a great... One of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, I think, in, in War and Moon. And they have one of... A, a very talented... Well, I mean, you drop back too far. You give him too much time to react, you know? Um... But anyway, you have one of the one of the you know a very good receiving core. Oh, he's definitely covered. Oh no, he wasn't. And Curtis Duncan also drunkenly running runs out of bounds. I'm not sure what was going on there. Hopefully, he's remembered how to run straight. He's been running straight with uh, Lorenzo White. Oof! And White gets stuffed like so many Christmas gooses. But still, Drive's doing very well. The Oilers are showing that they, in fact, did come to play the game of football in a stadium at this time. And uh, throws it out of the end zone, but, yeah. I mean, better than taking the sack, I'd say. Third down and five. Third and giggity goal. Oh, maybe bad idea. Yeah, especially when you're in those short situations, better to throw the short guy. It'll be, because a lot of times, and a field goal, you know, will come out with Al Del Greco. Oh, that's an ugly kick. But it'll still go, because it's short enough that you can afford to be kicking it horribly at that distance. Al Del Greco, the fine kick. Well, not really, but it went in. And that's... You don't get extra points for making it look prettier. Chris Warren on the return there. Chris Warren looks like he's on a tear, but he's only going to get 15 yards. Yeah, definitely, like, when you try to throw 
to a guy who's on a fly pattern and you're real close, they'll, mo they'll overthrow it a lot. Whereas when you, uh... Oh! The fake handoff. Oh, and that was... That was just sad. What happened there? Poor Chris Dishman. Why wait? Uh, yeah, the short guys who have like a stopping rod are more likely to get a nice accurate pass when they're close. That John L. Williams. I think uh, one of my cousins was named Janelle. But they pronounce like John L. It's a female. Uh, sorry. Female. Oh, there goes Janelle again. And apparently, uh, Chris did. Chris Dishman just kind of gave it up. He's like, all right, I'm getting blocked here. I'm not going to fight this. So the running game has reared its head, and uh, on the ground, the uh, Seahawks aren't too bad. In the air, they're really, really, really bad. McGuire runs it out, but it's a pass block. Oh, and they tackle him just for, for the hell of it, I guess. So hopefully the Daily Show has taken the wisdom of the fact that the Seahawks, they may run the ball, and they may do miss them again. Man. Chris Warren. We got fooled there, too. The handoff fooled you, which is funny because that's the play you picked. Which you figured, because that's the play you picked, you'd know that wasn't what they were doing. All right. Well, in any case, oh yeah, you didn't score a touchdown the first time, so you're down to the Seahawks, who haven't won a game all season. Well, that would be a little bit like uh, the Niners getting beat by the uh, Phoenix Cardinals. I ah, yeah, it's it's pretty much over at this point. You've been you've been that touchdown was too much psychological defeat for you. Ernest Givens says psychological defeat, schmeichological defeat, and cashes in for six. I'm glad. I'm glad you were able to pull that one out there. You have a tough, a tough loss for the Oilers there. <laughs> in the second quarter. It just goes to show you that when you got Warren Moon, you Ernest Givens, Curtis Duncan, Haywood Jeffries, numerous others. No, no, I don't. No, I don't think. You should, yeah, you should try not to. You should unread it a little bit more, and that would help uh, obviate the uh, chances of having a onside kick. No, no, it's obviate. Uh, but they're very similar. Citizen Kane. Oh, and I didn't look up. Uh, oh, oh, look at that. The computer feels sorry enough for the Oilers to cheat for him. After letting the frickin' Seattle Seahawks get a, a pretty big pass and then zigzagging for God knows what reason. Nice. Curtis Duncan over to center. That'll be a first down. First down. And about a minute and a half left in this, the second quarter of the American style football. And yeah. Too much, too much of the. Too much of the thumb. Yeah. I don't know when yours is, to be honest. TBH. Oh! Whoa. Oh, and Curtis Duncan, he's like that, First yo. Down. He can catch in a unfortunate situation. 50 seconds remaining. I'm sure the Oilers would like to get on the board again because Ready. apparently Set. they can't stop Set. the unstoppable offensive juggernaut that is. Oh, and yeah. Oh, and he caught it anyway. Well, good for you. I, I don't really want to give you a high five for that. I did. Because I felt it would be too rude not to do. 
Yeah. <laughs> you well, there's a reason for that. There was no two point option ninety three. They didn't. They, they didn't come out till like ninety five or ninety six. Yeah, that was a kid. When I was a kid, that was considered strictly a college thing. You know what I mean? It was like almost. I don't know. It's considered like juvenile, like two point option. This is the. It's necessary sometimes, though. I know, but I'm just saying that back then it was like two point option. This is the pro. The pros don't play that. You know, schoolyard bullshit. This isn't the University of Notre. We don't get paid to play football. And you call the timeout just as time expires. And now, welcome to the halftime show. As we get to see the halftime show blimp. And, and, nondescript R&B act. And the saxophone guy does not move at all. You've never seen the clown? Wow. Wow, an impressive offensive half for the Houston Oilers. On the run? Yeah. Oh, was that was that how it ended? Yeah. Man. I had to pay closer attention. The Oilers definitely want to win this game because they are neck and neck with the Pittsburgh Steelers for the division crown. And, uh... Although it doesn't look like it at this point, I am willing to bet that the San Diego Chargers and the Buffalo Bills are going to drop. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is like down here. yeah, are going to probably drop at least a couple of games before it's all said and done, and then we can see who's going to get the first round by and such, and who has to be down in the dregs and play the uh, the wild carders. Which may or may not include the Jones. Hey, no, called play. Fourth down to two. Discretion, the better part of valor. That's good. That's a good idea. At a price, there'll be a touchback, though. Yeah, probably. But it was a. Not bad, at least you modulated. At least you didn't try to go like full bore. Like a lot of people have no idea. Even though they've punted at 70 yards before, they're still like, oh man, I gotta go full bore. And that doesn't work. Well, it does, it's fine. I mean, nobody's gonna die over it. Damn the man, McGuire. Back to pass, and he has his choice of receivers. Tommy Kane, but Chris Dishman gets the pick. And he's going to get a little bit of returnage on that one, too. I can't remember if it's Tommy Kane or Benny Blades who was in uh, at least manslaughter. Maybe murder. I can't remember. But one of them. And see, it sucks because I don't remember which one of those two wide receivers touched down. Curtis Duncan. But I don't remember which one of those wide receivers murdered somebody. Yeah, Tommy Kane or Benny Blades, one of them, but I don't... So the thing is, because I don't know which one did it, uh, I'm, like, accidentally slandering one of them. <laughs> but, yeah, no, one of them got convicted for either murder or maybe it was manslaughter, but somebody ended up dead by their hand. So, yeah. So I can't remember which one it is, Tommy Kane or Benny Blades. They both have, like, real, like... Kind of hard-ass sounding names, though, don't they? Yeah. Benny Blade, well, Tommy Kane. That guy hey, sounds like the kind of guy I'll cut you. My apologies hut, to whichever hut, one of them hut, didn't hut. commit murder. Okay. Oh, Mark McGuire has his choice of receivers. Instead, chooses to throw about 10 yards in front of a guy. And, uh, yeah, old Danny. He probably should have played baseball like Mark. No, they are actually brothers, too. Yeah. They are real-life brothers, but, yeah... Dan McGuire, as you can see from this game, didn't have a lot of success in the NFL. Bri oh, Brian Blades. Why didn't he lose Benny? Okay, well, in any case, Brian Blades, who may or may not be a murderer, uh, gets the first down there. I, I don't... I gotta look this up after this game. I'm sorry, folks. And I'm... What was that? Hmm. Blue 48! 
Chris Warren. Well, yeah, well that. That was your fault. That was your fault. I'll tell you why. Because when you got grabbed, you didn't you didn't break out of it. But Chris Warren had a nice run there for the touchdown. Well, the Oilers' defense was not able to hold them, that's for sure. But still a 10-point lead for the Houston Oilers. Offensively, they're performing well. And that, that kind of was the story <coughs> with the Oilers in the... Uh, in the 90s there. They always had a real high-powered offense. But because the offense was so high-powered and because of the run-and-shoot, uh, one of the things they say that really got to them was because the run-and-shoot offense was so explosive, they either scored or turned the ball over pretty quickly, uh, which gave, didn't give the defense much time to rest. And so the defense tended to get overburdened by being on the field a lot. They could have used Bill Parcells. And some uh, ball control, offense, a lot of runs up the gut, a lot of bleeding the clock. Oh, Warren Moon with the pitch out. I can't remember if Warren Moon is Canadian or if he just played for the CFL. He did play for the CFL for sure. Like he was like, he was like a. He might be Canadian. I don't know though. I got. But he was definitely like in the CFL. He was like dumb man. I can't remember if he played for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders or the Calgary Rough Riders or even the uh, Toronto Rough Riders. <laughs> yeah, I know they made fun of that in, uh, and that's a touchdown by the way, Curtis Duncan. Uh, they made fun of that in. Uh, an early episode of South Park where uh, the dad turns to Philip. And they're like, yeah, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are playing the, the uh, I can't remember, the Manitoba Rough Riders. And uh, I tell you, these Rough Riders are just overwhelmed by these Rough Riders. Yeah, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders who scored only two rouges. Oh, no, no, that was on uh, The Simpsons, that part. It's like, yeah, the guy, oh, no. Horrific injury for Chris Warren. Ooh, that's the guy who's been tearing your ass apart, so maybe a little bit of sardonic joy there. Oh, he, he was a lot of spots. Oh, yeah, I know. He's their returner and their running back. Was. <laughs> Until he died. Yeah, four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Oh, that's, that's, that's dark. Brian Blades is not tall enough. To catch that towering pass. What? Yeah. Well, McGuire didn't score on you, did he? Oh, Farrell Edmonds, formerly of the. And they threw him down. Where's the sportsmanship, folks? Well, McGuire's out of the gun, which means they're not going to get any offense in. Over to center. Yes, and I was uh, correct in my assumption there. And they're going to have to go for it on fourth down, which if you stop them here, you'll have good field position to basically run up the score and run up your stats. They can give Lorenzo his 100-yard uh, rushing game. Oh, you chose poorly. But it doesn't matter. As three... Successive incomplete passes down, equals down, turnover down. ball on down. Oh, and he's able to get the ball off quickly to uh, Tillman, but Tillman didn't catch it. Oh, White's on the run there, and it'll be three yards. They're calling timeout just in case they can score I'm in public math. Uh, two touchdowns and a field goal in the remaining two and a half minutes in the game here. Whoop! Oh, man. I wasn't expecting to get that far, but Lorenzo White hits the 11-yard game there. Nicely done. And uh, 
Yeah, this is this is uh, a kind of a gimme game here, uh, so you know it's nice that uh, he gets to play the Seahawks to uh, pad his record. Well, especially the next one you're playing the uh, the Patriots, who are who are not great at playing football. They might be good at many other things. Oh, those accidental onside kicks, believe it or not, will catch up with you. I mean, yeah, just don't try to kick it full red. That's the real key. Because uh, full red, they're just going to down it anyway. You're better off trying to get it at the edge of the end zone. Like that. That's a pretty good uh, kick right there. See ya. Well, 38-14. to 14. A high-scoring affair, especially for the Oilers. Who are known for their high scoring affairs. Oh, there we go again. Oh no! Oh, oh he got it in. He learned his lesson from that one. What? Oh, Jesus. Will you? That is true. But, but that was real life. This is Tecmo. Al Smith. Something. It was stupid. It was like 30. They were like up 35 to 3 at the half. And then the Bills also like their starting quarterback got injured and they brought in their backup. Yeah. Did he? Oh, damn. That was back when uh, the AFC Championship game was for the uh, for the right to get beat by the NFC. Yeah, that kind of sucked because it was like basically everyone's like, "Oh, the Cowboys versus the Niners. This is the real Super Bowl." And then for the right to beat whoever got there. I mean, at least when uh, it was New York, it was competitive, you know. Damn, Curtis Duncan. He's got like three, four touchdowns this game. Big Kurt and Big Warren. This is even better than winning a Grey Cup, which, in case you're not familiar and you shouldn't be, is the Super Bowl of the Canadians. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, you're basically from Canada. Basically. Hey, <laughs> you better watch it, you hoser. Yeah, well, anyway, you'll have to stop them from scoring any rouges in this game. <laughs> yeah, what was it like? Yeah, Homer was bored watching TV. He's like, Can it, where was your guy going? I mean, really, like, I mean, he's, I got him, though. He's Usually like, I would pass him. I mean, were you like, you're I was just, expecting to pass. I can't believe they even did it. Well, usually, just watch the guy that you mean, he's a little handed off to see it. Anyway, actually, statistically, a pretty good day. For the Houston Oilers. Well, at the end of the game, you know. Look away. And next we're going to have the Buffalo Bills. But let's go ahead and look at the standings. Over here in the AFC Central. You see, that puts Houston up. So Pittsburgh is going to have to win their next game. They don't have to. It's a free country. And that'll also put Seattle, well, an impressive 0 and 9 start. <laughs> Nobody, I don't think, is there, do the Rams have? No, see, even the Rams won one. Not a good day for Seattle uh, people. Seattle Lights, something like that. All right, well, anyway, we're going to jump to the next game, which will have the undefeated Buffalo Bills. Uh, but first, let's watch a bunch of sim games. <laughs> so Pittsburgh has the next game, which will have Cleveland taking on... Uh, no, I'm sorry, Cincinnati. Get, well, they should win this game because they're playing the Bengals. And they win in convincing fashion because when you got Dave Klingler and three interceptions, which I'm kind of being repetitive there, uh, you're not going to win. Man, the Bengals got slaughtered. Next up in this 10th week of the regular season. 
The Chefs versus the Packers. Wow, Green Bay in a brutal win. Which, that was surprising because they're not doing good this year. And one more game. This is a divisional. The Jets versus Miami. Yeah, Miami should win this one. They should, but they haven't been winning much this season. <coughs> no, Miami does win. And that's good news for, uh, for the Buffalo Bills there. And, okay, so next game up, and uh, we'll join you in just a little bit. Good night, everybody.